<laughs> All righty, folks, please stand with us. And Goldie, please lead us in the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for just a moment. Heavenly Father, bless this assemblage. Grant us the wisdom to make our every decision fair-minded and in the best interest for all its residents. And I kindly ask everyone to please keep the Truants family in, their, in our prayers. Uh, the passing of uh, Charles Chuck Truants, which is the uh, husband of our dear friend and co-worker, Carol, and uh, mother to uh, Christy, a teacher at King Street School. Thank you. Okay, good evening and welcome to the Town of Rye board meeting, March 17, 2015. And Hope, please uh, call the roll, open the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the meeting for March 17, 2015 is now called to order. Um, <laughs> <I'm> all... <laughs> I know, I'm <laughs> okay. We're all here, Hope. Yeah, okay. okay, very good. Um, here. Yeah. Okay. First on the agenda will be uh, the approval of uh, minutes from uh, the meeting from February 17th. Do we have a uh, motion? I'll make a motion. I will second it. Any uh, comments? Very good. We also have a meeting from March uh, 3rd. We got, uh, okay, we'll approve the minutes from March 3rd as well. Is that uh, okay, Tom? Yes. Part Very of the same thing, Christina? Yep. Yes. That's okay. fine. Very good. Hope, please call the roll. Nardi? Yes. Collins? Villanova. Yes. Okay. Uh, first up is a uh, resolution for a Sullivan data contract. Oh, I apologize. Uh, you know what, Ho uh, Goldie? You're keeping me, uh, keeping me honest. I'm trying to beat my record tonight. Okay, comments from the public. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay, Billy. The most important thing is to keep Rye Town alive. I agree, Hold Goldie. I, I don't like it when they talk about a dissolution or they, they talk about getting rid of Rye Town. Rye Town is a, the most historic town in this area. And it, history has to be kept alive. And Rye Town is history. So please, don't let them dissolve us. Don't let them get rid of us, Rye Town. Rye Town is very important to all historians and all people who understand about the history of our area. Please keep Rye Town alive. Please. Thank you. Okay, Resolution A, Sullivan Data Contract. And who would like to present this? I will uh, talk to it. Okay. I guess I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, Sullivan Data is the company that uh, we've been using for the last uh, three years uh, to uh, help us with all of our computer services. They do our hardware and software support in the town. Um, the rate that they're charging has not changed. They're holding the rate again. Uh, this is the fourth uh, straight year um, that they would hold the rate. And uh, we've been extremely happy with their service. Uh, frankly, the town... Uh, Computer operations have been much more reliable, uh, and I think that they have uh, uh, transitioned us well and kept us well uh, these last three or four years, so I'm recommending we uh, approve the uh, one-year agreement. And uh, what is the, uh, how does this compare to uh, prior contracts for Sullivan Data? Uh, this is, as I said, this is the same price. They have had the exact same price uh, ever since we brought them in. They have not increased their price. And what about the service? Has services changed? Has any, uh, I, would, I, I, I speak for myself most, right. mostly, but uh, I think some of the town people would uh, be able to echo. I think they provide good service. They're very responsive. Okay. Um, and uh, our uptime on the system is uh, just worlds apart from where it used to be. Uh, we're, we're at probably 99% uptime, maybe even more than that in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, being working and operational. We're down very, very, very rarely. Very good. The comments on the board? Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to accept a resolution for Sullivan data for $18,000? I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Hope please call the roll. Nari. Aye. Collins. Yes. Go on over. Yes. Okay, we're going to go to uh, the resolution for the um, 
Resolution C, which is the homestead base proportions for Port Chester. D is for Rye Brook. E is three parts, which is Port Chester School, Blind Brook School, and the Rye Neck Schools. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Knauer. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody, and honorable council members. Happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. Um, I guess, should I just read the changes in the um, homestead and non-homestead based proportions in each of the resolutions? The verbiage is the same in each. Yes, it just lists the for, differences so they can be on record. Right. So for, for us, the important, uh, the, the important uh, metric is to understand what the difference is year over year. Okay. I have not pres I didn't prepare that written, but I okay. do have the uh, last year's figures Perfect. handy if yep. you need them. So do you want me to read last year and this read, year? Read, read, yeah, if you read last year, this year. Okay. And you can run through all five. Okay. And we'll take them all at one shot. Uh, for the village of Port Chester, the proposed homestead base proportion is 55.740822. The non-homestead is 44.259178. Last year, the village of Port Chester was at 56.84 rounded, and that was homestead. Non-homestead was 43.16. So in this case, the um, non-homestead went down a little bit, and the, um, excuse me, the homestead went down a little bit, and the non-homestead went up just so the, slightly. the burden shifted to commercial. A little bit, yes, okay. correct, okay. And that's true for everything except for the Rhinex School District, so I don't know if you need me to point that out. Maybe I should do them one-to-one. -one. Uh, Village of Rybrook Homestead is now 69.952839, it was 72.05 last year, the, um, and that's homestead. Non-homestead is now 30.047161. Last year, it was 27.95. For the Port Chester School District, uh, the homestead base proportion is 54.65. Four two zero zero. Last year, the Port Chester School District was at fifty-five point four five. The non-homestead base proportion for the Port Chester schools is at forty-five point three four five eight zero zero. Last year, it was at forty-four point five five. Okay. Now, um, the Blindbrook School District homestead base proportion is 77.856998. Last year, it was 81.13. The non-homestead for the Blindbrook School, the base proportion is 22.143002. Last year, it was 18. And finally, for the Rye Neck School District, the homestead base proportion will be 88.757750. Last year, it was 88.66%. And the non homestead base proportion for this year is 11.24. 2250, and last year it was 11.34 percent. Okay, uh, questions uh, from the board for uh, Mrs. Knauer? No, I don't have any. No. Okay, is there anything else we should know about these resolutions? Uh, not necessarily. Very good. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to approve uh, all five resolutions. I'll make a motion. Second. Please call the roll. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. And next is uh, Mr. Noto. Uh, talk about uh, Resolution F. Sale well, actually, property. I'm going I'm to need an executive session as this is uh, we're now in contract negotiations on this. Um, so I need an executive session. Not right now. I can do it after okay. the meeting we'll if you do, want. We'll um, take it after the meeting. Yeah. Very good. And uh, now G, uh, Greenway Property Services proposal. This uh, contract is up, Bishop? Um, well, no, the contract is not up. Uh, it has uh, more time. When is it up? 
Uh, it's up at the end of the year. Uh, but um, we were approached uh, by uh, Mr. Lagana, uh, and uh, what he was offering was to essentially freeze the rate uh, for the next, if, if the board agreed, he would freeze the rate if you uh, uh, ex exercised your option. Uh, the current contract, uh, uh, basically the base contract expires at the end of this year. December, and we have, December and we, 2015? Right. And we and have two. For, and, I'm sorry. And that's for both uh, snow removal and for. Uh, right. This is snow removal and uh, lawn mowing. Right. Um, what he's offering here is a saying that, look, you have a option in there to extend at two more years at uh, an increase in price. I will freeze the price for the next two years at my current price if you exercise the option now. So we felt obligated to bring that to the board uh, for your thinking. Uh, yeah, but if uh, the option to exercise doesn't mean that we have to exercise within the first quarter of the last year. Am I correct? No, no, but... That's what uh, I'm saying. So if, if he's genuine, we could exercise that in December 2015. But you're, you're, you're missing, I think you're missing the point, and, and the point is that the option to renew for two more years comes at increases in price for each of those years. Yeah, two percent. What he's saying now is saying, I will forego those increases. I will pr basically freeze your rate for the next three years if you exercise that option now. So yeah, I, I outlined the savings there. If, if in fact, the board uh, chose to do this, uh, there's a $5,000, $5,000, one, uh, 163 in savings. Oh, the, most of, most of which would occur in 2016 and 2017. And that's, uh, and that's over, uh, that's $5,000 over three years. Um, and, uh, and the question is, is whether or not, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not prepared. I don't know what the, what the board members think, but I'm not prepared to, uh, go into uh, an extended contract of the, you know, within the first quarter of, uh, of our last year. Um, uh, that's, not, that's just my opinion. I think that's a very long contract for uh, yeah. Yeah. our current situation. And they are, you know, no, I agree with you. I don't know that I'm prepared to mm -hmm. um, no, I agree commit with to a long-term contract. I agree with you. Okay. All righty. Um, okay. So no resolution here. No. Very good. And, okay, so then we have a discussion on Corporate Park Renovations Draft RFP. So uh, what, what brings us uh, to this RFP? Well, um, the scenario here is, is twofold. One, um, you know, uh, as you know, um, Councilman Nardi and Councilman Nioris have been evaluating a capital plan for Crawford Park. Uh, that capital plan, I haven't seen uh, anything from it as of right now, but the last time we looked at a capital plan for Crawford Park, it was well over a million dollars. Uh, that would be to renovate the facilities, et cetera, uh, you know, uh, throughout, including uh, perhaps the pavilion uh, facilities as well. Uh, the feeling uh, was that we, if we are going to go forward with this, we better start looking for an appropriate architect uh, to be able to provide the support necessary for a project of that magnitude. Uh, Crawford Park Mansion, again, was a, a personal residence. Uh, we have adapted it to a large degree uh, to a public use building. However, uh, we uh, see that there are many areas where the building is not code compliant and not ADA compliant uh, uh, for public access we're talking yes. about. And you'll yes. remember we had the whole discussion about the stairs to the second floor and the second form of egress and so forth. So the, the idea here was to get started on trying to find an architect that if and when the capital plan uh, uh, was, let's just say, moved forward by the board, uh, we would be ready then with uh, uh, an architectural proposal that uh, the board could review as well and select for help. You know, now, we also, if you'll recall, in the fall, we started looking at renovating the bathrooms <coughs> for the pavilion. 
Uh, we were going to kind of do that uh, more or less on our own. Uh, we did send out an RFP for that. We received, I think, five responses. I can't recall exactly. I think it was five it was about responses. Five, yeah. um, but in all cases, uh, we found out that uh, uh, there was a, a significant need for planning and engineering. Uh, we could not redo the bathrooms, uh, as some of the vendors pointed out. There were some shortcomings there. There were some space limitations. Uh, there were physical problems that had to be addressed. Yeah, so quite, let's just cut to the chase here. The, uh, the, the most important thing here is that we've identified that we can't go forward with a plan because, because of the structural changes that need to be made to the pavilion. Right. Um, and uh, so where we are now is that we have a request for proposals for uh, design and architectural services for Crawford Park Mansion and Pavilion. And, um, you know, obviously this is the, this is the, the perfect step uh, going forward uh, to identify um, uh, potential um, providers uh, for, uh, for um, Rytown Park, for Crawford Park. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm, no. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to add to the fact that it's optimal timing. Um, we are looking at uh, doing an energy audit at the mansion, and perhaps that could tie in with any changes yes. that need to be made that could help for long-term um, energy savings, and even uh, perhaps solar on the roof of the uh, pavilion is something that's being explored. So all things coming together very nicely to see where there's some synergy there and uh, where we can maximize efforts for the future. Yeah, Bob and myself, we, we've been working on this report, and I'm not too, I can do QuickBooks, that's about it on the computer. And so Bob was is, was working on it. Unfortunately, he ended up not feeling well. And we'll have a report for next month. But we will also look if we get an architect, we get keep some some of the integrity of the mansion. We don't want to, you know, we want to keep it, you know, new but old style looking, you know. Um, so and, and and with the pavilion, the codes have changed. To be honest with you, I do residential work. I don't do. Commercial. I'm not up on my ADA, and that's all changed. And I know it's simply just getting an ADA book, code book. Um, but uh, I'm not up on all the changes of the ADA, and there are, and that's one of the problems with the pavilion for the bathrooms in there. All right, perfect. So uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, to uh, go ahead with uh, the uh, uh, an R, uh, a draft, the RFP uh, to. Uh, Identify a design and architectural uh, uh, provider for uh, Crawford Park, and uh, we can have them on board. Uh, we select the right right people, right person, right company. Uh, they'll be able to uh, work well with us, uh, regardless of what uh, what projects we go forward with. Okay. Sounds good. I have one more comment. Uh, can we make sure that whoever we end up selecting, and this might be off, but while it's on my mind, um, will they have access to the to the architectural plans that we worked on several years back for the staircase just to make sure that they can get up be brought up to speed and place yeah the typically it's typically any any, any that, right? right any firm that we would select we would share whatever we information have. we had you we know we didn't move forward but we went through several rounds of uh yeah, we, we actually had pl we had plans yeah. designed and we bid the project. Right. If you recall, it was ninety five thousand dollars, and and uh, at, at that time, I think the board felt that the uh, cost of that project was a bit too high. Well, you know, part of it, uh, and, I, and just to give the, the full flavor, is that the cost, of the the investment into that ninety thousand was only giving us a uh, you know a proper means of egress to the second floor, um, right. but. Right. For the second floor, what are, what are we doing? It's not a place of public assembly. So, uh, part of you know the plan that that uh, Tom and Bob are working on is to uh, come up with a, with a better plan for the entire place, mm -hmm. not just putting a staircase on. Right. So, yes. right. And I think that uh, we're really going in the right direction. Uh, and I've never seen uh, as much progress uh, with the parks, uh, specifically Crawford Park, and what we're doing uh, than we're, we're we're experiencing right now. Uh, so, do we have a, a motion? Yes. I have a second? I'll second it. Very good. Hope, please call the roll. Okay. Aye. Yes. 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 Exciting one. Truly. Okay. And to our reports. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Knauer. Okay. Um, just a reminder to all the veterans that the um, Porchester School District and the Rhinex School District have adopted the alt vet exemption. And for those, 
vets who already have that. They don't need to do anything. But for those vets m who are mostly the World War II vets um, who have what's called change in level or formerly known as eligible funds, they do need to apply on the alt vet uh, form for this exemption for the school. And we've sent everybody out the forms. We're going to send out reminders, but it's all due by May 1st. And we're urging everybody to come in um, as soon as possible. And that also goes for the enhanced STAR and the age doll or the senior citizen exemption. The deadline is May 1st. We really encourage everybody to come in prior to April 15th if, 15th, if at all possible. It gets very, very busy after April 15th to May 1st. And also a reminder that we, our new location is at the Port Chester Village Hall on the third floor. That's 222 Grace Church Street. And um, again, just a reminder, everybody come in as soon as you can. Um, we'll send out reminders, but um, it's really important. And that's basically it. Oh, one more thing. The um, Fest for Beatle fans is coming up at the Rytown Hilton this weekend. And on Sunday, my daughter, who plays harp, will be playing there in the lobby. She'll be play, playing Beatles tunes. So yeah. come out and support that the Rytown Hilton fun. Beatle works. Fest. And yeah. yeah. Here's some great music, so. That's and good. that's it. That's a good report. It was Thank unique. You. Okay. <laughs> and uh, from our finance team, Mr. Burns. Uh, I just want to mention one thing. Um, the, uh, the auditors finished pretty much their field work the first week of March. Uh, they have all sketchers. They're tying up loose ends and uh, with uh, letters from uh, uh, confirmations and all things like that. So we are still on target. Uh, for them uh, to provide the final report in April. And uh, I'm not sure if they're going to report, uh, come to the board meeting for the April 21st meeting or the May, but they will have the report finalized uh, prior to. Very good. So April. we are uh, on a solid schedule. We are. Very yep. good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Dave. Okay. Tax receiver, Mr. Mecca. Honorable Deputy Villanova, members of the Town Council, good evening. Nick Mecca, 45 Alto Avenue, Port Chester. I extend my best wishes for a happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, we are right now cleaning up, approaching people, and make sure that outstanding taxes get in because in a few weeks, the new 2015 collection will begin. If we get a bill in the mail that looks like this, which is a county, sewer, solid waste, and town of Rye for the year 2015. This is due all in one payment, so you have to plan once you get the bill, it must be paid by April 30th. There is no two payments on this, okay? Any questions? No. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. And Town Attorney Noto? Well, as I reported, the Bowman Avenue Keyhole property closed, so we uh, received that money. And our class of 2015, uh, no, 2014 in REMS are uh, doing pretty well. We're, we have a lot of, a lot of monies come in. We have about four properties outstanding, um, let's see here, that have not yet paid. Uh, we have a motion for summary judgment on those properties returnable April 17th. So um, we're in good shape there. And I do need an executive session on my, some of my class of 13 uh, properties that we're trying to sell. Very good. Thank you. Crawford Park. Uh, well, we really don't have much to report other than uh, activities are starting up. Uh, the snow uh, is gradually uh, melting. And uh, uh, Dave uh, Thomas, uh, who handles the park reservations, has been uh, getting extremely busy. Um, Spots are, weekend spots are, are getting rare in uh, May and June. Uh, those are typically our most popular uh, months, and uh, we're getting close to fully booked. Uh, people uh, still like uh, Crawford Park. They still like to go there. Uh, we uh, are, have already processed the uh, two camps, the summer camps, for the villages, uh, the village of Porchester and the village of Rye Brook. Uh, so they will be there. Uh, we have not received a request yet from the uh, soccer groups. 
uh, and uh, we're expecting that any day. Uh, typically, they start uh, practicing up there around April 15th. Okay. Very good. Oh, did I call you? No. No? Town clerk. I, I, I was looking at my list. Town clerk. And I was just, um, if you have any questions concerning it. Um, I'd like to mention to the board that we've had quite a few um, <coughs> FOIL requests, and that's due to the amnesty program <laughs> oh, okay. where people have to go back 10 years and show how this, your property was taxed on like uh, one, two, three family or. Understood. Uh, okay. So. The, um, and you have enough support uh, by uh, getting out those FOIL requests, right? Right. Okay. Right. And they're all, they're all basic. Uh, there's no legal opinion. It's just like, no, identify right. the documents, right? Tax, whatever we have and uh, the tax office has been getting us generating a lot of reports for that as well, and, and we go down to the bill. We try to help them out to get get it going. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have, uh, uh, Mr. DiCrescenzo is not here, but we have the report from the highways. Um, I don't see anything, uh, anything uh, uh, out, of the ordinary. out of the ordinary here. Uh, we're, still, uh, we're still identifying um, some um, situations with uh, Otter Creek Bridge, mm -hmm. uh, but it's on, that's ongoing, and uh, we, uh, that window is coming and going for, uh, for winter 2015, so hopefully we can get some traction into uh, the spring. Uh, last correspondence we have is that the, um, we have correspondence to uh, Ann Capisi, the Rytown Court, and uh, to Ms. Capisi, we're pleased to advise that the Rytown Court has been awarded a grant on the 2014-15 Cycle of Justice Court Assistance Program and uh, the amount of that grant is uh, 15,169 and uh, Ann will uh, will work with uh, Judge Promozato and uh, Judge Colangelo in identifying uh, uh, the uh, execution of that grant. And congratulations to Ann for executing another well done grant. That's right. Okay. Uh, comments from the council. I just wish everybody a happy St. Patty's Day and a safe one. Have a good evening. Okay. okay. No comment. No comment. Okay. And um, that being said, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to go to the executive session to discuss uh, contract uh, items. I'll make a motion. Have a second. second. Very good. Minority. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, for the public, uh, for the public, we may come back into public session at the end. Right. Or uh, we may not. Or we may not. Right. Okay, very good. Thank you.